Good evening. As chairman of the World Golf Hall of Fame, it's my privilege to be in attendance tonight as we pay tribute to those who have contributed mightily to our sport, the greatest on the planet. And to host the Hall of Fame induction and these special honors at the new global home of the PGA Tour on the eve of our Players' Championship is undoubtedly a thrill. For as long as golf has graced our world, there have been athletes who entertain us with their feats of greatness, those who inspire us with their acts of sportsmanship, visionaries who serve as caretakers of the game, ensuring growth, stability, and evolution, and trailblazers who change the game in ways we could never have imagined. Tonight's honorees give us an opportunity to celebrate all of those categories. And one more shared commonality, lasting legacies in the game of golf. Peter Ubroth and the late Dick Ferris deserve special recognition for their relentless love and support of the game. Renee Powell's groundbreaking contributions in the world of golf make her the perfect recipient of the inaugural Charlie Sifford Award presented by Southern Company. On that note, I encourage all of you to read Charlie Sifford's biography, Just Let Me Play. What he endured in his pursuit of playing the game he loved is a stark reminder that we can and must be better as a sport and as a society. Those who will be enshrined into the World Golf Hall of Fame tonight, the late Marion Hollins, Susie Maxwell Burning, Tim Fincham, and Tiger Woods, through individual excellence and uncanny talents, have left indelible marks on the golf landscape. Marion Hollins, by all accounts, was a sheer force of nature. She was an advocate for women and changed the landscape of the game. And Susie Maxwell Burning was another role model, as you heard, winning three U.S. Opens over a 10-year period between 1968 and 1977, all while raising two daughters. We should all be so talented. There's a lovely sense of symmetry to Tim Fincham and Tiger Woods entering the Hall of Fame at the same time. The man who has had the greatest impact on the game outside the ropes over the last 25 years, and the competitor who's had the greatest impact on the game inside the ropes during that same period. It's fitting, and it's also personally fulfilling, as these two individuals have been instrumental in my own life and career. Tim Fincham was viewed by the public as stoic and earnest, but those of us who worked with him understood how much depth there was to Tim and is to Tim. He possesses a marvelous curiosity, a wonderful sense of humor, unshakable loyalty, and a relentless commitment to the PGA Tour and its players. As a mentor, Tim has provided priceless guidance to me and so many others. Masterful at building relationships, he made it a point at the appropriate time to arrange for me to meet with Arnold Palmer and Jack Nicklaus, and I still draw strength from the advice and support I received on those visits. Tim had a discipline about him that was extraordinary. He was whoop before there was a whoop. <laughs> Committed to being prepared, he kept track of his diet, his exercise, his sleep, and other things daily to make sure he was at his best. And for nearly 25 years, as PGA Tour Commissioner, he was. And the result was unparalleled growth for the PGA Tour, for professional golf globally, and amongst young people, thanks to his passion project, The First Tee, an initiative he founded in 1997. Tim, you never sought the spotlight. But tonight, I hope you soak in all the tributes you receive, as they are so well deserved. Now, in stark contrast to Tim, Tiger Woods is demonstrative and emotionally charged. And let's be honest, he's not half bad with a golf club in his hand. 
As a young man entrusted with global sponsorship programs at EMC, I attended the 2001 World Cup in Japan, when, where, when Tiger again showed that the impossible was possible. Needing just an eagle on the final hole to lift he and partner David Duvall into a playoff, Tiger would play his third shot from right of the green, hole high. That was the good news. The bad news? He had a downhill lie and gnarly rough, and he had to navigate a deft pitch up a slope. And oh, by the way, he had very little green to work with. <laughs> Having witnessed it up close and personal, it's not hyperbole to say it's the greatest shot I've ever seen. I was also amazed that week by the droves of Japanese spectators who waited patiently outside the gates each morning. It was clear Tiger was a transcendent athlete who resonated across time zones, cultures, and borders. Our paths crossed again in 2003 when I helped launch the Deutsche Bank Championship. And our paths have continued to intersect these last 14 years that I've worked at the PGA Tour. Throughout that time, as he created and grew the TGR Foundation, I've witnessed Tiger establish himself as a world-class philanthropist, a Hall of Fame-worthy accomplishment in itself. Hype is a necessary component of the sports world. And sometimes it's met. No one, however, has exceeded the hype quite like Tiger Woods. Perhaps the most telling evidence is in this room. If asked, I would venture to say that every contemporary PGA Tour member here this evening would tell you he picked up a golf club or dug it out of the dirt because of Tiger Woods. That's incredibly powerful. That, my friends, is a true legacy. My sincere congratulations to all of tonight's honorees. Thank you, and enjoy the rest of the evening.